G'day, John for the hot end. We have another laser engraver for you to have a look at. This one is by Longa, and it's the Longa Ray 5 laser engraver. Let's have a look. These are the specifications that came with the Longa Ray 5 engraver. You can have a look through there. There's a major difference with, or two major differences with this machine, and we'll get to those in a minute. First off, we'll take it out of the box and we'll put the thing together. Now, there's not a lot to see in putting together a laser engraver. Basically, it's just a frame with a carriage which is holding the laser module and that module travels X and Y direction to do the laser engraving. This is pretty boring stuff. Just bear with me here. There's the frame pieces and all the stuff that comes with it is all tagged and bagged and very well laid out. So putting it together is really no big deal. Very simple process. So here we're just assembling the x-axis. It's just a matter of a few nuts and bolts. Installing the belts. And putting the frame together, making sure that the frame is perfectly square. It comes with two fixing methods. There's the internal 90 degree bracket and there's also external screws to hold it all nice and solid. So it's quite a solid piece of equipment and once it's all together and tight it won't go out of square. Fit the Y to the frame. The X carries the laser module. So that's all nice and smooth. The belts are in place. Stepper drivers are in place and there it is all put together it's got a nice laser shield on the bottom of laser module and this laser engraver differs from others that i've used in that it has its own sd card reader so you don't have to have this laser engraver hooked up to your computer while you're actually laser engraving so we'll just turn it on and see what happens. Oh, and there's a nice touch screen, full color touch screen. And that has your uh, jogging controls and a few other adjustment tools. And also sculpture is where it calls up any files that are actually on the SD card. And it makes life much, much easier. It also has Wi-Fi, but I don't like Wi-Fi because you should be there watching your laser engraver at all times. Never leave it unattended. Then there's the laser focusing technique, which is just this piece of aluminium that you set under the back of the holder that holds the laser module. Tighten a couple of screws that slides up and down and you set your focus. Very, very simple. So we're outside now, and I would never use a laser engraver inside. So we're outside on my back patio. You can see the power supply there that links up to the controller. I've turned it on. There's the little micro SD card. We'll pop it in the slot. And the first thing we're going to burn is files on the SD card and we'll, oh, there's that taking the plastic off. That's always a good feeling. So we'll first up burn the files that are on the SD card. It also comes with these little bits of three ply or whatever that stuff is, quite thin. So we're not gonna cut it, we're just going to engrave on it. So it's currently doing absolutely nothing because I stuffed up the focus and we went back in and stopped that engraving and you can do that from the control panel and we'll fix 
the dumb mistake I made with the focusing and we'll try again. This is the outline that it tells you where the engraving is going to be and there we go we've got the thing running and it's engraving on that piece of plywood that comes with the machine. So we'll just run this through talk amongst yourselves until it's finished. I have, there we go, sped this up a bit so it won't take quite so long. The first part was in actual speed. So we'll let this run through. It's very accurate, I must say. The, the laser in this is, is pinpoint accurate. Now, the other thing I was going to tell you about the laser is it's actually quite a bit more powerful than the other laser engravers that I've used. This particular module is rated at 60 watts in and 5 watts out. And it did take me quite a long time to get used to the settings. I had to change all my basic settings to allow for the extra power on this engraver so there was a bit of a learning curve for that and we're just about finished this little file that was on the SD card and as you can see it's just a group of owls I think and yeah they came out really nice and this is a compass rose that was also on the SD card now the settings for this laser because it's more powerful I had to go right back to the beginning and start again now what you're seeing here is a grid that's available from a website called o2creative.co.nz and in that you'll find all the instructions for how to create this particular grid and how to set your different parameters for your laser engraving. I found it absolutely excellent to use to set up. It took me about four goes, but I got it in the end. And this is from that as well. Now, before we go any further, I'm going to put a shout out for one of the YouTube channels that I really got a lot out of for using Lightburn. Now Lightburn is the only software that I will use for laser engraving. And there's a YouTube guy called the, the Louisiana Hobby Guy. Now he knows a lot about Lightburn and a lot about laser engraving. So I, I really recommend that you check him out. Uh, he's got some really good stuff on his channel. Okay. After running through that full process, I found a file in, on the internet. This is an Inca calendar file. So using those settings that I found from the scale setting from earlier, I decided to give this thing a try. Now, the detail and the accuracy on this were excellent really really nice and again I set it up in Lightburn I copied the file from Lightburn to the SD card and then from the SD card straight to the machine so it frees up my laptop that I can do other things while it's actually doing this next thing I tried was a white tile there's umpteen videos on YouTube on methods to do white tile. So this is one that I did. You basically clean the tile and then you spray paint it with, I used white. Then you engrave your picture or whatever you want onto the tile. Then you clean off the paint and then you, this is what you're left with. And that is permanent. It'll never wash off, scrub off and at a great use for these lasers. We then moved on to cutting. Now this is where this laser really shines. Cutting with that extra power was really really easy. What you're looking at here is a piece of three millimeter 
uh, hardwood plywood. This was done with one pass, three millimeter plywood and a single pass, which was most impressive. And this one is three millimeter uh, MDF. And this was done with two passes, three millimeter MDF, two passes. This is a use that I came up with for the laser. I do hydroponics as well as one in my as one of my hobbies and these are little pucks now it's cut out of black foam type material it's a tile type material from memory it's about 10 millimeters thick i'll show you the use in a minute that's the little shape that i cut out of this material and there's its use it actually fits inside a hole in a floating raft hydroponic system and it holds the plants in place and it works really well. That's the longer Ray 5 laser engraver which I can safely say is also a laser cutter. Okay that's it for this one we'll see you in the next video.